If you could choose between a penny that doubled every day for the next 30 days or a million dollars, which would you choose? At first glance, most would prefer the million dollars today because, well, it's a million dollars. But after a quick look at the math, they would realize they had made the wrong choice. After just 30 days, that initial penny would have grown to be over $5 million, which is quite a bit more than the initial million dollars. That's a pretty big mistake. This story illustrates the power of compound interest. As Einstein once said, compound interest is the eighth wonder of the world. He who understands it, earns it. He who doesn't, pays it. If compound interest is the eighth wonder of the world, sequence of returns is number nine. Sequence of returns refers to the year-by-year -year returns that your assets experience while in the market. You know, the ups and the downs. It's a principle that is often misunderstood, yet one that can have a tremendous impact on your personal finances and your life. To illustrate the compounding power of sequence of returns, let's look at a simple math scenario that is often miscalculated. If you have $1,000 in the market and experience a 40% loss, that leaves you with $600. Of course, the markets do rebound, so everything will be okay, right? What percent of gain would you need to earn on your new balance of $600 in order to return to your original $1,000? If your initial thought was 40%, you'd be wrong. Your instincts may tell you that if you lose 40%, then gaining back 40% should offset the difference. But any new returns are calculated based on your new current balance of $600, not the $1,000 you started with. If you take your current $600 and add the $240 of gains, you still only have $840. So even if you do go down 40% and back up 40%, you still lost money. In this scenario, your $600 would need to experience a gain of 66.6% .6 to return to your original $1,000. Of course, if you experience these losses and gains over sequential years, and with larger dollar amounts, the impact on your finances can quickly escalate and have tremendous consequences. Let's look at a story that illustrates this. Consider the story of three bears, Barry, Fuzzy, and Benny. These three bears entered retirement on the exact same day. They determined that each year they would need $25,000 to cover their bear necessities. They each started with an investment balance of $500,000 to cover their living expenses throughout the remainder of their retirement. After much research, each bear determined and agreed that a 6% average rate of return on their initial investment would allow them to sleep well at night and maybe even hibernate each winter. Fast forward 20 years. You may think each bear was happy, but much like with the doubled penny, this simply wasn't the case. Let's look at what happened to each bear in our story. First, we have Barry. Barry wasn't feeling too great. Let's look at his sequence of returns. Year one was tough with a 15% loss. This was followed by year two, looking much better with a gain of 7%. Then there was year three with a 9% gain. And finally, year four was a fantastic 23% gain or rate of return. And this sequence of returns continued throughout Barry's retirement. Although the math shows that Barry achieved his planned 6% average rate of return, at the end of 20 years, the negative start, constant change in his sequence of returns, and the annual living expense withdrawals left him with just over $50,000 in his account. Poor Baring had to resort to living on merely the bare necessities of life. Fuzzy also averaged 6% in the market, but luck was on his side as his sequence of returns was the opposite of Baring's. Let's see how it played out. In year one, Fuzzy was happy to receive a 23% return on his investments. This was followed by year two, where he was able to get a 9% return. Then in year three, he received 7%. And finally, year four, where he was hit with a nasty loss of 15%. Fuzzy's investments followed the same sequence throughout his retirement years. By year 20, though, the joke was on him. All the stress was unbearable, with the market ups and downs leaving Fuzzy with $368,000. Although Fuzzy had experienced positive returns early on, it wasn't enough to offset the destruction caused by his 15% loss. Remember, due to compounding, you often need to recoup more than what you lost in order to return to your initial balance. This was not so funny when he found out he'd be broke as a joke by year 31. Lastly, we look at Benny. 
Benny chose to invest in a solution that limited him on high returns, but also protected his investments against negative losses. Benny's investment solution dictated that he couldn't claim more than a 20% rate of return, but also ensured that he could never get lower than a 0% return. How did this play out? Well, in year one, Benny was limited to only a 20% return on his investment, while Fuzzy enjoyed a more lucrative 23% gain. In year two, Benny received a 9% market return, just as Fuzzy did. And in year three, both bears received a 7% return. Year four is the year Benny learned that zero can be your hero. While Fuzzy experienced his 15% loss, Benny instead only experienced a 0% rate of return on his investment because he was protected from negative losses. As with the other bears, this sequence of returns continued for Benny for the next 20 years. The result? By year 20, when both Barry and Fuzzy were strapped for cash, Benny had over $1.1 million in his bank account and was well on his way to being able to provide an indefinite amount of picnic lunches for himself. Are you wondering what would have happened if Benny's sequence of returns had matched Barry's with a negative first year? Well, if we keep the same limits of a rate of return no higher than 20% and no lower than 0%, Benny would still have had almost $900,000 in his portfolio, even after experiencing negative losses at the beginning of his retirement and he would still be on the path to continuous picnic funds. So, what's the moral of this story? When it comes to investments, sequence of returns matters. The power of compounding interest means that negative returns are more powerful in the earlier years, and it takes more for your finances to bounce back from negative returns than you would expect. When you are young and have plenty of working years ahead of you, you can bear the risks that accompany greater highs and greater lows in the market because you have time on your side to recuperate. But it becomes a whole different ballgame when you retire. You won't always have the time to allow your investments to recover like you could when you were earlier in your career. To further complicate matters, your retirement balance changes from year to year as you're pulling money out of your portfolio to cover living expenses. When it comes to retirement, you simply can't take as many risks with your investments and it makes sense to find ways to achieve consistency in your returns and investments. For Benny, this took the form of ensuring that he was protected against negative losses. Much like how a seemingly insignificant penny will consistently double over time to eventually achieve monumental value, negative losses to your retirement funds can grow exponentially over time, making life unbearable. But luckily, the reverse is also true. Consistent use of tactics to safeguard your finances and realize positive returns so that life's a picnic for success and a well-earned retirement full of infinite picnics. If you're the type who wants to get into the weeds and the numbers to see how these scenarios pan out, or maybe you want to get your bearings and learn how you can be like Benny, reach out to one of our qualified professionals today for a complimentary, no-obligation discussion to see how we can serve you.